What's up guys, it's Russ, and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to make vertical drone light paintings like this, and a couple of little extra tricks to make the whole process easier. Here we go. Before we get started, if you haven't seen my other video, which I'll have pop up around here, I recommend going to see that first because you want to, this is the second step in complicated drone stuff. So you want to make sure you understand the first step first, and then you can move on to the next thing because there's a lot of intricate parts, and I want to make sure that you're comfortable and not just diving right in. So if you haven't done that already, make sure to go check out that video. So I just grabbed the Loon Cube logo from the internet. It's a simple shape and I wanted to show my appreciation for the product that I use all the time to do this. Secondly, you might have noticed already that in the last video with the Iron Man mask, the image was much bigger than the image you're seeing on the screen right now. Reason being is we don't know, we no longer have to try to maximize the space to make the image look like it's the right size, right? Because we're not super high up, we don't need to be, because we're at a vertical plane. So you can make your drone light painting much smaller, which is not only good to not have to like worry about helicopters or anything like that, but in certain no-fly zones, you can only go to a certain height. And this, most of the time, I've never had an issue, never has an issue with uh, going too high. A lot of the times I'll go up to like 60, 70 meters max, and I've never run into an issue, so it works out great. Okay, if you've seen this video before, you know how we're gonna start. I'm gonna just take Number one, make sure that my tack is 0 0.03 and bring it down here, press OK, and go through it until I get through most of the points. But I'll show you in a second here what I really am chasing after. So now that we've got seven points in, right, and I'm going to take the seventh point and I'm going to copy it, okay? And so this really becomes 0 0.8. Now it's, I know it's in the same exact spot, and normally when you would create something like this, and the, the drone wouldn't fly because the two points are literally on top of each other and it won't work. But instead what we're going to do is I'm going to copy 0.8 or 0.7 or yeah 0.7 and 0.8 and then I'm going to create 0.9 here. Okay, now I'm going to move 0.9 into the next spot. Then what I'm going to do is I'm now going to copy 9. And so 9 and 10 are the exact same, and 7 and 8 are the exact same. So what's going to happen basically is a little further down the line, we're going to, we're going to, right now we're going to make a note on which points are the same. And what I generally do is I'll go, okay, so I have point 0.7. Now what's going to happen is we're going to make the drone turn around so that the light's facing away from the camera, okay? And it's going to, if this is where the, if this is where the drone is, right, this is where it's making the shape, I'm going to have it turn around as it goes backwards. So the lights over here so now as it's turning around because it's going to take time to rotate to come back then it's going to fly over to the next point behind so if this is where it is it's going to go yeah so it goes starts here comes back then it's still in the back and then once it i bring it to to point nine now because it was seven or rather ten so we went seven eight nine now we're gonna to go to point 10 here. I'm gonna make it turn 180 degrees again so that it's facing the right way. So this does require a little more work, but if you don't wanna have, if you're worried about covering the lens or not, or if you wanna make it really, really good and perfect, this is the way to do it. One caveat, however, is when you have it higher than say, you have it around 40, 40 meters um, or starting at 20 meters, the, the issue becomes is that because now that you're shooting at an angle, right, that rotation, you're gonna see a bit of where that the drone rotates. So you either have two options in this case. Either A, you're gonna really fly the drone really low to the ground, and that way, because your 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 plane of view, plane of view, view of sight, one of those, you understand what I mean, is we're like right dead on, you won't see that. But if you're higher, then what you might wanna do is you might wanna rotate the vertical image to move a little bit like at an angle like this and then that will also get rid of that problem but we'll get to that in a little bit so I'm gonna finish this out real quick and I'm gonna make notes on what uh, points that I need to do Once 
done, you can see that we've completed our image and I have all the points on what I'm gonna need to rotate listed out right here, okay? So, now that we have that, we're going to export this as a KML and do the same process we've done before. Okay, I'm gonna do save, place as. We're gonna keep it at LoomCube Twain logo because that's the part that I do it at. So I'm gonna save it, cool, got it. Now we're gonna do the same process that we've done before. So, I am going to, you know, miss you how glitchy like we normally do. Okay, so now I'm going to, you know, import, choose the file, it's a long cube, Twain logo, I'm gonna import that mission. Cool, we have that mission. Now, what you're gonna have to do, is you're gonna have to go to missions and export as a CSV, okay? Now, we've downloaded this as a CSV now, so that's good. Now, comes a part where we make it vertical, okay? So I'm gonna leave a link for the vertical converter in order so you don't have to do it in Excel. The original guy who came up with the, the concept of using the math in Excel, it was a long, arduous process. It wasn't even really that long, it was like three minutes, but it, it can be really confusing for people who don't know what they're doing or aren't familiar with it. So there's a couple other guys. I'm gonna list all their names on the screen right now who basically created the concept, or the ability rather, to do it vertically, which helps in so many other ways. So I'm gonna walk you through on how to use that tool right now. The first things first with the link to the Google Co Laboratory in the description. First thing I want you to do is I want you to go to file and do, then just click save a copy and drive. This is just so that, make sure that it makes it easy to access for everyone. We don't have to worry about people deleting it or doing whatever, right? Or, you know, messing up numbers and all that stuff so then nobody can use it. So this is a matter to not only keep it safe for everyone, but to also keep your own, depending on what you want. After that, I'm gonna click on file, open in playground mode. Then you're gonna click on the little play button on the left hand side. It's gonna take a moment to get the program started. So you're gonna initialize and connect, and then you're gonna scroll down. I'm gonna click on the browse option. You're gonna grab your KML, and now we have a couple questions to do. So now it wants me to put in my desired minimum altitude and feet. So for me, I generally start at 20 feet. We'll go up from there if I need to. I just know that 20 feet is at least high enough in the sky. It's generally not gonna hit anybody if anybody's in the park or whatever. It's just a good safety thing to start with. So I'm gonna put in 20 here. Now in the next part, you know how I said that if you wanted to put it in an angle like this, you could? This is where you could do that. But we're not gonna do that right now. So instead, I'm just gonna put in 90 because that's gonna take it from here to here. And then after those, you're just gonna click enter a whole bunch more. So you don't need to worry about them. It's gonna do some processing. And now we see what it looks like in a vertical plane. Then it's going to automatically download the CSV file for you. And then once we've done that, we're gonna go into Mission Hub Litchie. We're going to import the file that we just got. And now you can see that it's in a straight line. We can't see the shape anymore. So you know that it's working anyway. Then if you want to double check, you can export that as a KML 3D path, open it in Google Earth, and we can see how it looks like vertically. So we know for certain now that it looks clean and that it looks good. So now comes the somewhat tricky part, okay? So as you can see, I have all of my numbers right here. So now what I'm gonna do is I know that seven, okay, that's where we're gonna start. My latitude is what this is. So now I need to make sure that that goes backwards, okay? So I'm gonna click on the next point, which is eight here, okay? And I'm going to change the latitude instead of it ending in 11, it's gonna end in 40. So now it's gonna push it back, a certain number of feet, I don't know how much, but I know it's enough because I can tell the difference or that there's a distance between the two points. And then I'm gonna make sure that I change my heading to be 180 degrees. It's also really important, important to note right here, mm -hmm. you need to start all of your waypoints fanning, facing north. Otherwise, it doesn't flip right because we use the equator and all sorts of things. So just make sure that whatever image you put on there is always facing north, okay? Otherwise, it just doesn't work. Just, just trust me on this, it's it's not worth it. So just find a place you can do it north and then if you really wanna rotate it later, you can do that using um, the Litchi pro program tools to rotate things.
four points. I'm gonna go make sure I'm going to, I'm gonna just save it right now just so I have a copy. Bloom Cube Twain, right? So I'm gonna call it for now. I'm gonna click save. And then I wanna make sure that I wanna export this, this KML again, okay? Because I wanna make sure that I can see where I've gone backwards and make sure that it's at the right point. So I'm gonna export it as a 3D KML one more time. Make sure that I get rid of the other one. And so now you can see in this where you can't see those lines anymore, right? Because we put them back here. And that is how you get it to work. Okay, so now we know it's good because we don't see those lines anymore. If you haven't already, go ahead and save the mission to Litchi. And make sure that all of your batteries and everything is charged and good to go. And of course, be sure to check the weather and all of that stuff to make sure that you can fly and try not to hurt anybody or anything. What you're gonna see now is a video uh, that I did using Caden Live that basically allows us to do the drone light painting videos, which someone else in the drone light painting group, if you guys aren't part of that on Facebook, go ahead and join it. It's great. Uh, they helped kind of like, they showed me the program and I kind of figured it out from there. So I'll be sure to do a tutorial here soon on how you can do the same thing. It's a super cool effect. I love seeing the clouds go through the through the frame and, and at normal speed, you can see people as well as birds fly through it as well. So that makes it even cooler to me. So if you liked this video, and you thought it was awesome and all that jazz, go ahead and hit the like button. I would love that as well as subscribes, all that stuff. Cause taking these videos take a lot of work. Taking these videos, doing these videos. Yeah, those ones take a lot of work. So I would really appreciate it. And I hope to see your beautiful faces in the next video. Okay, bye. If you haven't already, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, cannot speak today. Program file to your glitchy stuff. Why can't I? What, what are words? I can't even remember what. Okay, let's try this one more time. If you haven't already, go ahead and save.